gentlemen and ladies earlier we had a discussion about horizontal and vertical separators I had mentioned that I knew where one was that was sectioned so you could see the internals and how it operates as promised I've made it back here and I want to show you this three-phase horizontal separator that is sectioned out in fact it's sectioned out so much the the dump valves the Kimray valves are sectioned as is the volume pod that's not really why we're here though we're here to look at the horizontal separator itself you you notice they've cut the the heads out and the weir boxes so you can see the water and the oil side weir walls weir boxes kind of look in there and see how the different heights see here the the oil one is cut the water one works by that pipe in there letting the water from below in and drain out that's why it's got so much higher of a weir wall than the oil that way you can skim the oil off the top of the water and you can drain the water off the bottom of the oil so that pipe is connected on the inside it's connected to the bottom of the weir box you notice this is why this one was taken out of service see all the pitting 50 to 80 mils of pitting notice that uh, you have all this small bore tubing attached that's actually because a lot of these older ones were set up off this little volume pot because you used dry regulated natural gas off the wellhead to control all the pneumatic control valves. So these dump valves, these ones built by Kim Ray and others, all the regulators, everything like that, all of them were operated off natural gas historically. Nowadays with emissions that's changing. But historically, that's how it was all done. Notice this one has a uh, gas dome. Your gas cell outlet line would be that one right there coming off the top above the demister pad. And notice this communicating chamber does not have a flange attaching it to the the, the main chamber. It's got a it's got a, just an ordinary welded in it. This one also has coils in it. They don't always have coils coming in off the wellhead, but uh, some of them do. This was just an attempt to give it more heat before it actually dumped it into the main chamber. And of course, the fire tube. If we look in here, the inlet there, right there, those inlets are connected to the, the tubes. Let's see if we can look in there and see. Yeah, you can barely see it, but the inlet coming from the wellhead goes into these tubes, circulates back and around. Got a series of, of bypass valves and dump valves to control how it goes. This one's interesting in that the main chamber's not flanged for the fire tube, but it has an O-browned neck nozzle that uh, is attached so that the fire tube can be pulled out kind of an unusual design you know it's a neat thing about these designs is it doesn't really matter how you build them it's they all work about the same <laughs> kind of interesting you can see the bottom of the the gas dome and you can see all that pitting right there below the weld that would have been right there at the oil to water interface elevation a lot of corrosion I put my flashlight in here inside the gas dome the communicating chamber so you can see the inside of it see you've got the dump float right there and if we look up here in the top I've got my flashlight on that way you can see the perforated uh, support plate but if you look up past that you can see Try to hold real still so you can see it real well. You can see the mesh of the demister pad. That's to get all the last of the moisture to 
drop out so that the gas coming out the top of the gas dome going out your sales line right here is as dry as you can possibly make it no surprise there and I want to call your attention back here to the the sides of the the weir box notice all that heavy pitting heavy heavy pitting you don't get that in the WTI oils no not at all anyway I thought you guys might be interested in seeing that um, you know like I like I've said all along you can build these things however you want you can have flanges on the main chamber you can have flanges connecting the communicating chamber the gas dome to the vessel and you can have flanges back here on the main chamber so you can pull the the weir or the the sails end of the main chamber to get to the weir boxes um, a lot of them have a threaded nozzle connection right here and that goes right down to the top of the the weir boxes if you can look in there you can see it in there on top so you can get to the top of the weir box sometimes they're you know bigger than that six inch instead of a three inch but like i say the configuration can be any way you you want them but these horizontals have a lot more surface area i really like them a lot more and they sit straight on the ground so you don't have to worry about anchoring them down or them falling over anyway thanks for coming along bye